What's up you guys? So today Kieran from Close to Broke invited me to play in a private 5-5-10 game at the bike. So here I am, wish me luck, and hit that intro. Cheers. With the guy Branson, who has the Branson poker logs. <laughs> no! Let's go, let's go! <laughs> Tell him he's got a lot of class, and it's all low. Walking into a private room, I definitely felt like a VIP. Johnny freaking Chan was playing in the room, but I passed right by him and the other peasants playing in the bottom, because today I'm walking up this ramp and playing like a king. We're playing 5-5-10, I buy in for $1,000, and the first hand I get into is ace-8 of diamonds on the straddle. The cutoff raises to $35, the button calls, and I make the call as well. Three ways to a flop that comes ace three four with two spades. I check as I would do with any hand, and the cutoff continues betting for $75. The button folds. I think the only real move here is to call with top pair, so that's what I do, and we're heads up to a 10 on the turn. I check, and now the cutoff bets $350. Man, he is not messing around here. I could definitely be dominated by a better ace or two pair here. If he's bluffing, good for him, but I think there are just better spots for me to wait for. I make the fold, and on to the next hand. Time for some vlogger on vlogger violence. I pick up queen 10 off in the straddle, and Kieran raises to $45 from the small blind. I'm in position with a decent hand, I make the call, and the flop comes jack queen 7 with two diamonds. Kieran bets $30, I have top pair, but I think raising would be an overplay, so I just make the call, and the turn comes an 8. Kieran bets $125 now. It's a hefty bet, but I picked up additional equity with a gut shot, and I'm still ahead of all his draws. I make the call. The river is the deuce of diamonds. Great. Definitely did not want to see a diamond, and even worse, Kieran bets $300. Against most opponents, I think this is just a fold. Most bluffing hands got there. 9-10 for a straight, diamonds for a flush. But this is not most opponents. I've watched Kieran play a good amount, and I know he's capable of some super creative bluffs. And while I'm tanking, Kieran says, Okay, so first of all, this could just be speech play. He could just have a straight or a flush already, but I do have the 10 of diamonds, which blocks both the straight and the flush. But now that he said that, more bluffs with showdown value are coming to my mind. Pocket nines with the nine of diamonds, jack nine with the nine of diamonds, queen nine with the nine of diamonds, ace jack with the ace of diamonds. Maybe he has queen 10 like me. Curiosity gets the better of me. I make the call and he shows Jack nine with the nine of diamonds. So definitely happy to make the call against a tough opponent. Next, I pick up Jack queen off in the small blind and the button opens to $35. The button should have a wide opening range. In addition from the small blind, I don't like flat calling very often. I prefer playing a raise or fold strategy for the most part. I three bet to $145 hoping to just take it down now. Well, instead, I have flashbacks to my days as a security guard because I get no respect. The big blind calls and the button four bets to $500. Yeah, that didn't work. Time to tuck my tail between my legs and fold. Next hand. Moving on, I get king 10 of diamonds in the big blind. The hijack raises to $40 and I make the call. Heads up to a flop of queen nine eight with two diamonds. Super pretty flop here as I have a flush draw and gut shot straight draw. Still, I check to the preflop aggressor as I would do with all my hands and he continues for $45. All right, with my combo draw, it seems like a good situation to put on the pressure. I raise to $150. My opponent calls, that's totally okay with me. And we go to a turn which comes a king. Interesting spot because now I have a good amount of showdown value with top pair. I slow down and check. I don't think worse hands are going to call two more streets of value. And if he has a better hand like king queen, I might get raised if I bet and put in a really difficult decision. Anyway, my opponent checks back and the river is an offsuit ace. Great. <laughs> Even more hands I'm losing to now like ace queen or ace high flush draws. I check just looking for showdown and 
thankfully my opponent checks back i flip over my cards and they are good let's keep the good times rolling i pick up ace king off in the small blind and the action folds to me since i'm out of position i'm gonna open a bit bigger so i make it 45 dollars then the big blind three bets to $130 and it's back on me. I should be opening pretty wide from the small blind, which means the big blind should be three betting fairly wide himself. I have a top tier hand, so I put in the elusive four bet to $400. Great result. My opponent folds pocket jacks and I take it down without having to see a flop. It's deja vu. I pick up ace king again, this time on the button. There's a double straddle to $20, and Ethan, Mr. Rampage Poker himself, raises to $60 from the cutoff. Pretty clear 3-bet spot, I raise to $180, but then the big blind flat calls, and the $10 straddle 4-bets to $460. Ethan folds, it's back on me, oh boy, what to do? Well, first of all, we are playing in a private game where all the players are significantly more aggressive than normal. When the big blind flat calls my 3-bet, it incentivizes the straddle to 4-bet a little lighter to try to take down the dead money. Okay, I am blocking aces and kings. Let's go for glory. I 5-bet all in for $1,500. I'm repping aces and kings here. This move should look incredibly strong. Let's hope it gets through. The big blind folds. And then the straddle makes the fold. Let's go. Just like that, we take down a huge pot preflop. Next, I get pocket nines on the button. The cutoff raises to $40. And I think this is a spot I don't mind flat calling or three betting. But we're in an aggressive game. So I follow suit and three bet to $120. The cutoff makes the call. And the flop comes out queen six three rainbow. Cutoff checks. It's a dry board, but I could have a lot of strong queens and over pairs as the three better. I make a small C bet of $85 and the cutoff calls. Well, it's a dream scenario. The turn is a nine. I hit a set and the cutoff checks to me. I bet $250 targeting a queen, maybe some flush draws. And with that, the cutoff makes the call again. The river comes the jack of spades not exactly the card i was looking for as the backdoor flush comes in and the cutoff checks to me he has around 700 dollars left in his stack but now unless he has jack queen i don't know how likely he's calling an all in here with just a queen i decide to size down i bet 300 dollars, forcing any queen to make the call He's pretty unhappy, lets out a big, but uh, calls. <laughs> I show and he flips over ace queen. So maybe I missed out on some value on the river. I'm not sure. Let me know what you guys think. Heading into a PLO double board bomb pot, we each get four cards. We go straight to the flop and the winner of each board takes half the pot. I pick up jack, jack, queen three in the low jack. The first flop comes seven, three, deuce, all clubs. But the second is Jack Queen three with two hearts. There's almost no chance for me winning the bottom board as any one of my opponents could have just flopped a flush. But the top board looks great as I have middle set. The only hand that beats me is pocket queens, which is quite hard to have because I have a queen. So there's only two queens left. I bet $75 and the hijack and button both call. I feel like if someone had the nuts on either board, meaning queens or an ace high flush, they would have likely raised. So I'm feeling pretty good. And the turns come a 10 and a five. Not the board bearing top card I was looking for, but I still have the second best hand possible. So I bet $250. Both the hijack and button call. Hopefully they both flopped flushes on the bottom and I can take half of the overall pot. The rivers come a four on bottom and the six of hearts on top. So now I'm in trouble. If either of these guys have hearts, I'm toast on top and bottom is no good for me either. So I check the hijack bets $500. The button calls. Uh, it'll be extremely painful if both my opponents just have clubs, but I think I still have to fold here. 
I lay down my cards. The hijack shows pocket queens. So he actually had me crushed. But then the button flips over ace five deuce king with three hearts. So he has the nut flush on top and a straight on bottom. And he scoops the whole pot. So thank goodness I didn't put another dime into that pot because I would have been screwed. Let's get back to some normal hands. I pick up pocket tens on the cutoff. There's a $20 double straddle and the hijack opens to $75. Again, I think this is another spot for aggression. I three bet to $225, but then the button four bets to $550. Folds back to me. I think I'm just dominated too often in this spot. I think... Four bets are going to be jacks or better and ace king. Even if the flop comes out low cards, I'll be out of position and still won't know if my hand is good or not. I make the fold. The button shows a king. Later, he told me he had ace king, but even knowing the results, I think the fold is still the better play overall. Last hand of the vlog, I get ace king of hearts on the straddle. Beautiful cards, there's a $20 double straddle, the low jack and high jack both limp. I'm mentally calculating what my raise size is going to be, but then the small blind goes all in for $345. Instead of just flat calling, I raise to $700. This way, I can just isolate the small blind, or if someone does decide to call, I'm building up a side pot to fight for. Well... Everyone else folds. I ask Marty if he wants to run it twice. He says, yeah, and that he needs a miracle. He flips over jack seven of hearts, so he's dominated. But the first board comes seven, ace, six, six, nine. So I lock that one up. And the second board comes seven, four, seven, king, three. So Marty has trip sevens there, and we chop the pot. Honestly, not too sad about it. Marty is a great guy and I'm happy to chop it with him. Soon after that, I rack up and call it a night. So I am done with that session. It was smooth sailing for the most part. I was in the game for $1,000. And uh, yeah, I mean, the action was pretty good and I cashed out for 2,030. I dipped a bit at the end. The game got a bit bigger. People were pretty aggressive and I just couldn't uh, get anything going, but uh, overall I'm pretty happy booking over a thousand dollar win. Hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.